ang ating mapagmahal at minamahal na Pangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Kindly be seated. Thank you for your courtesy. Uh, again, uh, I have two pages for you. Hindi ka makabawi sa gasolina, pati sa traffic inconvenience. So, I'll uh, dwell first on the acknowledgement. Then after that, uh, maybe dalawang pages naman ang kinocontribute ninyo halos. Tingnan ang gasto ng bayan. Hindi naman maganda siguro. So, I'll just read maybe the penultimate paragraph. Then, uh, I do not make speeches. So, Mag-istorya na lang tayo. Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestri Bellio, Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rolando Husilito Bautista, and the other members of the Cabinet, Commission on Filipinos of Richard's Chairperson, Justice uh, Francisco Acosta, Overseas Workers Welfare Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak, the 2018 Distinguished Awardees for Filipino Individuals and Organizations Overseas, and the Model OFW Family of the Year, other distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As I've said, uh, <clears throat> uh, just the, para hindi naman siguro magsama ang loob mo, ikaw bang gumawa nito? As an appreciation for all your hardships, you have my assurance that the protection and promotion of your welfare and well-being will remain as one of this administration's top priorities. <laughs> this nation will always recognize your invaluable contribution to nation building and this administration will continue to craft policies and implement programs that will respond to your needs and protect your rights. All I ask of you are OFWs to remain committed to your families as we work towards a more equitably progressive future for our country. Congratulations at mabuhay kayong lahat. Is there a meal uh, served here? Merong pagkain? Kasi kung wala, tama na yun. Kasi gutom na rin ako. Pero kung may... Uh, okay. Dinner? Um, okay. Buffet. You know, <coughs> I have a limited time, uh, space, and money during the campaign. But since I could not uh, travel much for uh, lack of resources, hindi ako nagpapakorni. Talagang kinulang ako. But, uh, you know, uh, the presidency is uh, a gift from God. And uh, the gift uh, from God includes uh, uh, the service to my fellow men. Uh, umikot ako ng Pilipinas. I didn't have really a chance to go abroad like the others. But I promised five fundamental things for you. One was that uh, I will try to minimize, since you cannot totally eradicate it, that that's a reality of life here in our country. I will try to cut down on graft and corruption. Then I will improve the pub public order and safety of the people and uh, uh, 
declare war on drugs. The third is that uh, I would not uh, in any manner impede the progress of this country by allowing or me or my family or anybody else for that matter to commit graft. And third, that I will look for ways to maybe uh, find out really how we can uh, invite investors, the big ones, the big ticket pro pro projects that we intend to have in this country. Ginagawa ko yung first. Marami yung akong tinanggal sa gobyerno. The latest was about two days ago. And it has been a continuing uh, process uh, without really attributing any guilt on anyone. It is a, 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 an almost everyday affair that I go after craft and corruption. This is what I promised you. And I'm doing it. And everybody knows it. At... Uh, as uh, sinasabi nila, the, it has been a favorite cliche among politicians. I mean, uh, mga bagong bayani. So, anong ginawa ko? Una, well, I made my stand very clear that I won't allow dyan sa unang kayo because the first and the last in going in and out would be the airport that uh, into nila yung kalukuhan nilang kabastosan nila ng bala. Tanim bala, sabihin ko, kung gusto ninyo, well, sa inyo yan, but uh, kakainin ninyo pag nag umabo tayo. And since then, ay wala na akong narinig Putang ina, papatayin ko talaga yung leche kayo. Madali, malam magpatay. Maingay lang yung human rights, yung yawa na yun. So, I don't allow craft and corruption. I don't allow the opening of bags in the airport kung magwi, lalo na yung mga mahirap talaga. It pieces me to no end. Yung, uh, because I'm also, it, kami yung mga mayor noon. Once we enter the airport, and even our passports are collected, somebody takes care of it. And then kami, you will just wave through the customs. Uh, well, ako nanonood lang. But ako naman kasi isang anak lang rin na mahirap. Uh, sabi ko, well, one day, Soon, baka, I might be able, because I have this rocos with uh, certain customs. Ayaw ko kasi makipag-rumble dyan sa bag. So, one of the few left. So, tapos yung isang taga Hong Kong na OFW, mayroon siyang TV. Hindi na nga niya, binanot lang niya, pero maliit eh. So, parang carry lang niya doon sa airport. Hindi niya tinyakin. So, nung pag ano, binuksan, tapos tinax, umiiyak sabi niya, ito pang regalo lang ito ng mga pamilya ko. And since few of us were left in the airport at the time already, yung mga relatives niya, sige, babay, babay, nanonood lang ako. Tapos she was insisting na she goes to the cashier and pay. Kaya sinabi ko, pare, maliit na bagay naman yan. Bakit mo pa pakialaman yan? Does not really mean anything to the Republic. Yung the money you get, hindi nila ako kilala. Sabi niya, but bakit ka nakialam sino ka? Kaya sinabi ko, putang ina mo si Mayor Duterte ako. Ang dabaw. Pag hindi tayo nagkakaintindihan dito, bakkan kita. So, he realized that. Ngayon, ano na, sabi ko, no opening of the box. 
Now, the latest uh, ngayon is when you go in, no more human contact. No more human contact. You just swipe your... Uh, in two minutes, swipe mo lang yung, ano, yung visa mo. You're out. Wala nang tanong-tanong. No human contact at all. And that will be true. And I'm ordering it now. They have to make it faster. Pati pag-swipe palabas. For all OFW workers. No more yung... <laughs> Yan ang inuna ko. Sabi ko... Yan mo kaya tibigay ng pera sa atin. Anong ginagawa ninyo? You proclaim to the world that the COFWs are the lifeblood of the nation. Parang dextrose ito. And the income that we get, sa ating gross domestic product, it helps and it accounts for so many trillions. Money which is not available to us kung wala kayo. That's why stop, stop fucking with it. Go for some improvements. So ngayon, uh, so ganito ang ano ko sa inyo. Corruption really uh, flourishes because kayo sa labas, nagtikim tayo ng other cultures, other behavior, other departments of people. Kasi sabi ko, kayo mga Pilipino, hindi kasi kayo assertive. But if you just tell your noon pag uwi na ano, once they begin to mess up with you at maghingi, sampalin mo. Kaya kung hindi mo sampalin, ipaabot mo sa akin, my office is available 24 hours for matters that are, that has something to do with crap and corruption. I will entertain you. At ipatawag ko yung putang inang yan, sa harapin ko, gusto mo sampalin. Gusto ko sampalin mo. Depende sa galit mo. Bigyan kita sampo. <laughs> Kung maawa ka sa pangatlo, di okay na. Sampalin ka talaga. Kung hindi mo sampalin, sampalin ko sa harap mo. O, ganun. That is the only way to instill uh, behavior. You know what? What is the most dreadful thing that can happen to, to, a, to a person? Being humiliated. Kaya yan ang baraha ko. You go fucking with government, uh, your, your, your job, and I'll, I'll, I'll humiliate you. Pag hindi kita sinipa, yan for the first time nagkikita ng itong PSG, mga gwardiya. Pusta po ito, nakikita sila ng presidente talagang nambubugbog. Talagang nambubugbog ako dyan sa ano. Uh, dyan ako nasanay. Kasi kami, harap kami nitong ni Velio. Velio and Dulay sa BIR. Dyan yan sa isang kwarto. Kaharap kami. And I was uh, with uh, a roommate. It was quite a bit, uh, you know, I was talking always in English. And uh, I went around the country uh, being uh, the foreign affairs. And uh, every time he talks, even in the cabinet, I would think that uh, there's somebody who has an uh, accent here, just like an American. Who is this uh, guy? Oh, it's Yasai. Kasama ko yan sa dormitorio. Itong si Dulay, pati si Bilio, ako pati si Yasai. He went also to become the Foreign Affairs Secretary. Mahusay mo talaga si John, the UP graduate. But the only problem is that, and I can understand it, naging, he was a holder of an American passport. And that was when ito siya pati, I remember the activist, Llewellyn Ortega of UP. Sila yan hinanting. Yeah, he went to seek uh, 
sanctuary sa Amerika. And siguro, he joined with Maceda, established a law office there. And he was given papers by the American government to allow him to travel abroad. So he, I don't know, but the Commission on Appointments, which is a, a shared power between the Commission and me, Congress, uh, decided to just uh, deny him the confirmation. So it was a value no trabahanta kami. Sabi man niya na, kaya binigay ko sa kanya yung labor. Kabi sa, kami niya gusto daw niya mag-OFW. Sabi ko na, sige. Siguro yung, kasi yung kasintahan niya nandoon. Hiwalay naman pagkatapos. Hindi, wala rin. Balik siya domestic na. Hindi na OFW. So, corruption, sinabi ko siya, kasi alam ko masakit sa inyo. Alam niya, you, we are trained outside, especially from those coming from the Western world. Na people are willing to pay taxes. But, kailangan makita nila yung pera nila. And that's what we're trying to do. And to make it doubly sure that you won't doubt me. And there are, General Anyo is a cabinet member. Uh, uh, General uh, Bautista, uh, when the puro yan sila, naging nagdumaang chief uh, in the Philippine Army, si John Anyo, chief of staff, he is now the Department of Interior Secretary. Uh, mas gusto ko ang military kasi madali. Kasi itong mga susmo. And I have this bad experience. I've been mayor for 22 years. 23 years sa Davao. Talagang didibatihin ka sa mga gagong yan. Kung may paggawa ka, kung ano pang idagdag na pang pahirap. Instead of just looking for a way to tailor fit or to dovetail the project, marami ang ano, Eh, hindi naman ako nag-uutos ng illegal. Ngayon, eh, pag sabi ko, in Marawi, uh, there was uh, a massive destruction. I got a general who was assigned in my city. So, but could you fix it within six months? And he did. Well, tapos, Burakay, eh, General Anyo, sabi ko. And General Simato, ang DNR. Fix Boracay in six months. Now it's clean. Do you think, kung ibigay ko yan doon sa mga bureaucratic, walang mangyari niya. Maubos na lang yung pera ko. Kaya yun ang, ano, and I will never order anything that's illegal or unlawful. Yung lahat ng utos ko, as a lawyer, talagang sigurado yan. Well, that's why na nasanay na rin ako. Uh, so, most of the halos ma magkakalahati na. So, isang table, purong ex-military. But there are civilians already. At kami dito, ang Bisaya, dalawa na lang siguro. Pero dito yung civilian. Uh, sabi nila na surti na mga Bisaya, Eh, swerte na mga Ilocano, puro Ilocano yung mga sundalo dyan. Eh. Yun. At as, it, as a guarantee, no transaction of whatever kind that would involve money, public or private contract, that would, it does not, that, that paper does not reach my table. Kanila yan. Sa pa, kay Bebot yan. Kung it begins and ends with their office. Ang akin yung mga appointments lang. Pati policies. That's to make sure. That's why pag inupakang kita in public, pinutang ina kita, sigurado yan. I do not have doubts. I do not have the, to oscillate. Parang electric fan. Because I am sure, matatawa ang 
then uh, Druga. When I was mayor, I was at the crossroads of uh, what used to be the laboratory city of the NPAs. And uh, a lot of killings, and I said, I'm going to build a city. Not really a rich city, I cannot do that. But I'm going to build a city that is comfortable for you. And I said, drugs then was, I, I was a public prosecutor. I was doing trial work. And I've had all the experience about this drug problem. I had so many heartaches about cases falling down because of corruption. Money is very toxic. A barangay captain with a capital of 100 100,000 can be a millionaire in six months. That is why in that list there are about a thousand barangay captains who handle the basic unit of our country, the barangays. And there are mayors also involved. And just like when I said when I was mayor, do not destroy my city because I will kill you. Do not destroy our sons and daughters because I will kill you. When I became president, I said the same thing. Please do not destroy my country. We are very poor. We have a runaway population. It's because of the church. They have always been against family planning. But the priests and the bishops are also into it, producing more Filipinos, <laughs> the idiots of our time. Early on, when I was we in high school, uh, my childhood was a brilliant one. Dominguez was a consistent valedictorian. Me, only 75, but Dominguez. Uh, oh, we had this, this experience. Right? We were corrupted when we were in the first year. So if you'd want to be specific, you have your cell phone, get to the name in the internet, Father Mark Falbi. And he was sued by, well, they were sued by the Paris, uh, the parochial uh, of LA. And they won, I mean the complainants won 25 million settlement. He is that priest. That is why these bishops can tell me the most hypocritical institution in the entire Philippines is the Catholic Church. And the Pope knows that in the Philippines. Most, no, no offense intended. I have so many relatives who are gay. I have two brother-in-laws who are gay. But most of the priests there are homosexuals. Almost 90% of you. So do not postulate on me morality. You've always been attacking me ever before the election, during and after. Because in thy name of human rights. You know, I just, kasi hindi na ninyo marinig to. You'll never hear this again. And uh, you are, uh, out of the country. Shabu. Of course, this killing. And for the 4,000 plus uh, police uh, punitive encounters, 4,000 plus. That's really the truth. But the, you know, the human rights, whenever they found a carcass there, a cadaver, dead person, would always attribute it to the uh, government as uh, a victim of AGK extrajudicial killing. 
Look, I am admitting for those encounters by the police, 4,000 plus, I assume full responsibility and I will answer for it. And if I have to go to jail, I will go to jail. So be it. But do not fuck me with the death of everybody there and keep on harping on that uh, International Court of Justice. I do not recognize your ICC. It's a creation of EU. We did not have a part in its creation, organization, or constitution. We do not even know the judges there. We do not even know the prosecutors. How were they elected? Democratically? The chairman of that ICC commission is the brother of the King of Jordan. Is he elected by the people? Does he answer to anybody? There has to be some. And then just because we submitted an addendum there to the Rome, you now want me to to be crucified before a strange looking idiots. I live with all the judges. There is no idea who they are, what they finished, what was their what's their education? And you want me to go there and answer? Fuck you. I don't recognize you. Why should I? I have my country. Estrada went to jail. They say it's not working. Oh, shut up. Arroyo went to jail. Aquino escaped jail. What he was doing? Me? Stupid. That is the presidency is a gift from God. That is my gift to you. I will go to jail for the Philippines. But I said, you want the killing stop? You want the rebellion stop? For God's sake, drop the chemical and drop the guns. The original estimate was three million. When I became president, I did not realize the full extent. I said, I can finish this in six months. Well, in Davao, I finished it in six months. Exactly, I said, I will get rid of you. Get out of Davao. If you don't, sorry. I said, get, getting, it's not a matter of uh, instilling that you would go to jail. I said, so be it. I will go to jail. Do not, I mean, I've been mayor for 23 years. I was a public prosecutor doing trial work every day. I saw so many of my cases that because of money. Money is very toxic, not only here, but in America and in China and all. Why? It's easy to get money. It's easy to buy a prosecutor. There's a judge here in Manila. I don't know. He was called by the Supreme Court. He had 1,000 cases or more of drug uh, related. There was never one conviction. And there are prosecutors who really can be bought. I will tell you that because I was once upon a time a prosecutor. They are for the taking, and that is why so many acquittals 
and the expedient uh, practice of uh, leading to a lesser offense. You know, a certain amount would give you a severe penalty because of trafficking already when you exceed a certain amount. But the courts allow a plea bargaining agreement by just also pleading to possession and forgetting the, because the fiscal is also for. Everybody is for the taking. So what am I supposed to do? I don't have to wish, um, the one. you know, every centavo in this garden, it's all accounted for. I said, I do not just spend money of the government. I avoid holding money. Wala ako magawa. My country is on a spinning spiral downwards. What am I supposed to do? You don't say that Duterte is killing the poor. Bullshit. Shabu is a commodity for the poor. And most of those who are already inutile or drains out of their minds because the chemical shabu reduces the brain. Then 1.6 million Filipinos reduce to slavery. To what? To a drug called shabu. And what is the consequence? Total social dysfunction of our society. If you really want to destroy a person, make one member of his family an addict, and it is a dysfunctional family. They don't know. If he is the father, the breadwinner, he does not work anymore. He's skinny. You, you, you saw it. They lined up uh, when I was just about one week president. I made, I said, you surrender or you die. Thousands of them, you saw them every day, lining up before the authorities. Skinny, sickly, ugly, and those are the fathers, those are the mothers who are breadwinners in the family. And if the family the father is already into drugs, then the family ceases to exist in food, in their schooling, and everything. And it one, be liberal about it. It's not the true figure, because no, not everybody surrenders. If there is about 10 million, 10 million Filipino addicts, there is a widespread dysfunctional families in our cities. And the son of a bitch, the human rights, they would just say, oh, here are the figures. They just band it around and say, 70,000. They do not even state where was he killed, what was the uh, instrument used, where, when, how? When I say, in this country, the film is 70. Really? Really? Make it 100,000. Look at our society and look at the dead carcass of what these persons are doing to my country. There, you are the cream of the cream. I mean, those of you who went there, equipped with the knowledge, education, background, and all. I'm happy for you. I'm indeed very grateful that you have sent money so that this nation can ever flow because of the money. I am happy with that. But what about those Filipinos who go there to work as domestic helpers. When I was a mayor 
I went to the Middle East because a Dabawenya was arrested by the religious police in Saudi Arabia. And I went to plead her case before King Fad, before he died. He was a bit, uh, but not, not really, not enough that he could not understand. Maybe in that lucid interval, maybe I was, I, I was lucky. So he listened to me and agreed. But the minister there of the court, of the throne, said you better talk to your counterpart in parliament. So I talked and we discussed. And he said, coming from a member of the cabinet, a parliament rather, I'm sorry, parliament, look, there are not all Arabs. The Arabs that are educated, Western uh, educated guys. But if you are assigned in the far flung areas, and you are assigned to certain tribes, that's part of their culture that if you are a slave, bought from the slave markets of Africa, or a domestic help from, from the Philippines, rape and physical abuse is part of the territory. So how many have you now? Since then, count the many so many Filipinos who died placed inside the freezer for one year, and they go there in droves. Why? Because they needed money. They cannot be criminals here selling, uh, selling Shabu because they are afraid to die. So they are there to work for their families so that they can send the money back home so that their children can go to school. So most of them, what was the latest incident there? Another Filipina jumping from the roof, from the window. Putting on, and that, that she would be the, what, the 48th girl to do that. What does that indicate to you? What does that it say? It says that she could no longer bear or endure the degradation and the loss of dignity. She cleans the house of the employer, cleans the house of the daughter-in-law, clean the house of their son-in-law, and they are only allowed three hours of sleep and eat garbage. So if you are now here in businessman, thriving, wallowing in wealth, and your son or your daughter is educated in Australia or in America, and you think that it is good for you to do that to your fellow men, I will kill you. It is only right and just that I will slaughter you. And that goes for the terrorists who destroy and kill people for nothing. May I remind everybody, we are all human beings, huh? that you cannot monopolize evil in this planet Earth. If you can do that to us, I will return the favor five times more than what you are capable of doing. Do not ever think that ah, he's with government uh, he's a man of conscience. Of course, I graduated from Ateneo. We had a good lesson of our religion there. I graduated from San Beda. It's a Catholic school. At the end of the day, I studied how to kill. which was not part of the curriculum. Of <laughs> but that's what I said. I said, do it in another time. Do not do it during 
my watch. So, <clears throat> they're crucifying me for this inflation. When everybody knows, Kayo, I'm sure you know. You know, after the war, Southeast Asia was in a quandary. The conquerors left, there were little aid, but Japan had the greatest of it. They had the Marshall Plan in Europe and for the restoration. Manila was the, one of the most damaged cities in the world. And it was done by the Americans. The, the Japanese were here already. There was no need for them to bomb the place. So it was America that was trying to retake it. And uh, ever so slowly, we had to rebuild the country. But God, in his infinite generosity, allowed Indonesia to, reco to drill for oil. And he got the oil. Malaysia did the same. God gave them the oil. Brunei, they're all Muslim countries. They were also given oil. Philippines, it's not. We have to buy oil. That's why any increase in the price of oil automatically in one week's time, everything also, and that includes, well, of course, maybe the food was uh, misunderstood. But everything that you see in this room is all oil. You cannot produce that, how do you call that thing there? Projector? Is that the name? Ah, projector. That's, that's oil. That is oil. It is made of a machine powered by oil. Unless you have the solar and everything, but it's not enough. It's still oil. Coal. This rub and this water. May I be allowed to? Even the water is oil because it's produced by a machine so that we can extract them from the surface water or the aquifers inside. It's all oil. My shoes, the bullet that I kill, the addicts, the grand cylinders, they could not have been crafted into their form without a machine. That was, or that is powered by oil. Again, yung mga Pilipino, wala akong magawa. Wala matayong oil. Every time uh, this America keeps on hitting Iran, and Iran seems to be using it as a leverage, but I don't know, there is a sudden drop of oil, and we also correspondingly reduce or gasoline and diesel. But once it gets up again, because there is a world market, uh, and uh, they are busy spending billions on uh, the power to destroy submarines and all. If I were to suggest, why do we have to suffer? Why do we ask China, Russia, America, Great Britain, France. Let's set a date next year. Blow everything up and so that we can all rest in peace. No more addicts, no more working, late, no more traveling. Uh, it's a desolate thing. That's how it is. Uh, that's the reality of the world. They can solve it better, 
because they have the electronics, they have the, the, the modern equipments to do it. Here we have to rely on the human intelligence mostly. And some of our, some of our intelligence people, but every day, every day, I, ha I lose about three to four policemen. And all in all, I lost about 3,000 soldiers and policemen in the drug. Tell you what, I'm going to ask you a question. What precipitated the fight in Marawi, the Marawi siege? Was it something about law enforcement? Yes. What? They were trying to serve a warrant against the Maoti family because he had a warrant for an arrest. The police went there to serve the warrant. They were fired upon. They retreated. They had to call in the Marines. But the Marines crossed the bridge. On that day, on the first salvo, nine of my soldiers died. What precipitated that fight? What caused the soldiers? It was not rebellion. We knew that they had the firearms. I could have bombed the place. I could have ordered the Air Force to bomb all and just wipe out them out. But I am not prepared to do that. Because my mother, grandmother comes from there. So I'm half uh, Mindanawan. My father is Ibisayan. I've been trying to just calibrate the wars all along. But what caused it? What was the crime for which the warrant was served? Shabu. Shabu was funding, I've been telling you time and again, even when I was mayor. Shabu is funding the rebellion. And the buyers of Shabu are Filipinos. It was not until after I became president, when I ordered the, the chief of the Philippine Constabulary to open all the records, give it to me. And then I realized that nine police generals were involved in drugs. Just like in America, just like in Mexico, Middle East and all. It is money, it is corruptive and it is toxic. So what? You kill policemen? Yes. Have we killed policemen? Yes. But for the life of we do not believe that I kill children and women. I just cannot do it. Women look for another guy who was the so that's uh, what is important to you and what's being done to this country. Do not be so sad about being taxed because your money here during my term is safe. I will not allow corruption. I have fired so many cabinet members for just an infraction. I am so very strict, I said. And you can look at the records. I only get my salary. 2007. That's what I get. I do not sign anything else. I live on my salary. Of course, Libre, but my house is not here. This is the ghost town of uh, Manila. <laughs> I go there to near the camp of the soldiers. I sleep there. You want to see my room? I'm not trying to, I said, to be melodramatic. My room is just about that size. You want to sit, you are invited, cordially invited. But please, I do not, meals are very simple. One viand, one rice, one soup. No more steaks, except for steak visit. Hindi mo naman pwedeng bigyan si Xi Jinping ng kalabunggay. 
But theory, it's uh, whoever is different, even justices of this one. One by one, uh, by you, but yours, you have plenty of beans there, so maybe more than one ulam. Enjoy that's the people's money, not mine. So, you know, me, Dito, we occupy an elevated uh, portion of the hall. Well, of course, because we, this is ours, we work here. But we are all workers in government. General Anu, General uh, Bautista, Director Justice Acosta. Actually, he was my classmate when he retired. I got him to because he's very honest and he takes care of the overseas. Uh, and he's my fraternity brother. And he's bright. He was a former Court of Appeals Justice. So we are all workers of government. We work for the people. My oath, the long and short of it, is just two sentences. I must, mandated, I must preserve the nation. And I must protect the people. That's all there is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President.